All right, we just got out of the Jensen Wong keynote at CES. It is the Super Bowl of CES and in the hallway on the way to the keynote, you will see pictures of like Elvis, you will see pictures of Frank Sinatra. Shai Balor is here now to break it all down. Shai, I think you can add Jensen Wong to the pictures of Elvis and um, Frank Sinatra at Las Vegas because there were so many, I mean, thousands of people coming to this keynote. There were only 1,300 seats. All of them were fill, filled up about an hour before the keynote even started. But I want to get your top line thoughts. First of all, was this a good day at the office for Jensen? Yeah, I mean, Jensen is a rock star. He is, uh, when you talk AI economy, he is the principal. So whenever he goes on a stage to talk about um, a sentiment check on what's happening in AI, everyone listens because he has his finger on the pulse. And I think that my biggest takeaway from the NVIDIA, when, NVIDIA event was that you cannot view them as a GPU company. I think a lot of bears view them as a cyclical hardware company. And I think that is totally offsides. And what Jensen just laid out at this event today is much bigger than chip, uh, chip, more chips. It's they're really building this full operating system for the AI economy. And that includes the models, the networking, the storage, the simulations, and the robotic stack that turns AI from something you just chat with as a consumer into something that acts in the real world. And I think Jensen had a line that actually basically summed up the whole story. Uh, he said it felt like everything happened Everything happened everywhere all at once in 2025. I think that was his opening statement. That's exactly what this event was. It was NVIDIA saying that AI was moving from training big frontier models into now running AI everywhere constantly with memory, with context, reasoning, and action. And I think he come, came away selling the ecosystem and they are going to be the kingpin of the new digital economy. The last time he gave a keynote was in October, and at that point he saw, he gave guidance looking for a 54% revenue growth this year. Did you hear anything among the many things he said in this nearly hour and a half long keynote that makes you even more bullish perhaps um, about those guidance figures that he gave er earlier uh, in October? I think that's, uh, nothing specifically on the fundamentals. I do believe that when he had the last keynote, China wasn't at play anymore. I think right now we are getting, going to get some upward surprise on the China revenue. I think that um, NVIDIA's big issue right now isn't really the demand. It's actually more on Google TPUs. Are they going to maintain pricing power once A6 get, continue momentum? Because TPUs are the second best accelerator in the market right now. So if that's a big change in what it's been like the past couple of years, but I think that you got a lot of commentary that, especially today, that the compute stack is going rack scale, which means we got a lot of Ruben commentary and why NVIDIA is more of a systems level uh, type of company. They're not hardware, like I mentioned, they're uh, not a single chip company anymore. They're playing the full system game. So, like Ruben, for example, is six chips across the whole system, like CPUs, GPUs, MB Link Switch, uh, you name it. Like they, it's like an extreme co-design, meaning it's engineered to work as one integrated machine and several pile parts. I think that's going to matter a lot for data movements. And I think that inference is going, is going to continue scaling up the way it's been. That's going to matter a ton for these customers. So that combined with Blackwell is going to be fully ramped. Uh, remember, it takes six to nine months to really fully ramp a whole product. And I think that Q1 of this year is going to be that moment for uh, a model get, going to be released fully on Blackwell. I think Grok is going to be the first model to do so. When that gets released, you're going to see a lot of um, a better scenario of what's going to come for 2026 for NVIDIA because you'll see all the uh, issues uh, on Blackwell, all the things you need to fix. And you really don't know that until and models up and running fully on Blackwell. You know, I'm glad that you mentioned Grok because there were so many headlines over the holidays about NVIDIA buying Grok. What do you make of him really not mentioning it at all? I think it's um, it happened just a week ago. So that is one thing that um, you, uh, for PR, you can't really speak on it until you have all your ducks in a row of exactly what it's going to, what's going to happen after this Aqua hire. Uh, I do want to think. I do want to talk about uh, a bit on 
what that acquisition acquire means for Nvidia specifically. Like if I was, let's just say um, Jensen had no guardrails on, and clearly he does because he's the principal of AI economy. But if he didn't, how would he go on stage to talk about why he acquired Grok? And I think it's because clearly the b bottleneck right now isn't compute. It's you, uh, it's you can just buy more GPUs now, but inference is kind of a dis different beast in a way where there's two different phases of inference. It's a reading and writing phase. Like when you write a long prompt into uh, chat GPT, that takes a lot of compute. However, the response back is a totally different animal. It takes a lot of um, external memory, a lot of different things that uh, you can't really control right away. So like the context is, way out of memory to stay coherent. I think that's why they decided to need to acquire Grok because um, it's structurally more bullish for the memory complex in the first place. I think that NVIDIA is kind of uh, becoming, thinking about efficiency in a much bigger spotlight. Uh, before training is, you don't really get an ROI on training. Everyone knows that, but you need training. That's just the name of the game. Inference is a totally different animal. That's where businesses really see the ROI. So you're seeing a character change in the market where they're starting to care more, less about just total volume deals and more about what's the ROI see on those deals? Like how is it going to, um, what's the tokenization improvements, economics? Uh, what's the architecture going to help me with better return on the cost per query? So I think that in this AI economy, cost per query is the only metric that really matters. And it becomes somewhat of a utility people can use constantly, these um, frontier models. So that's why I think that NVIDIA just acquired Grok because that second part they weren't skilled at because they didn't really, um, nobody really designed for that second part. First, like training was the name of the game. Inference was a nice to have. Now inference is a need to have and need to own in the stack. And I think that probably in um, San Jose, uh, I think the, their next event is uh, GTC in San Jose. That's where you're going to hear a lot about Grok, and I'm really looking forward to hearing what he says about it. You know, you mentioned ROI. Speaking of ROI, so many traders, so many investors have been looking for uh, what's next when it comes to autonomous driving. Jensen saying himself that he foresees a billion autonomous cars uh, globally. He spent quite a bit of his keynote talking about Alpa Mayo, that vehicle platform that will allow cars to essentially reason. What did what are your top line thoughts? What was your reaction on Alpa Mayo? Because for me, it felt like okay, thirty minutes in, we're finally getting the first real announcement of this keynote. Yeah, I mean, the way that Jensen framed it was really important to me because um, since he's calling it more of a thinking and reasoning model for autonomous vehicles designed specifically for, I think it was the way he phrased it was long tail driving scenarios. So yeah, the reason I know this stuff because I'm a big Tesla shareholder, I think uh, when you hear long tail driving scenario, it's just a fancy way of saying the weird, rare, scary stuff that doesn't happen often, but is exactly what causes incidents and like kills autonomy at scale. That's a whole Waymo issue. Like sometimes you see videos online on Waymo just driving through a police standoff with a fire on the middle of the road. Like you can't detect these random scary stuff. So traditional self-driving stacks that Waymo operates on still tr often treat perception and planning like totally separate, separate things. So like you detect the world and then you plan on what to do, but that world, that only works until the world throws something completely crazy like that fire or standoff. So like a situation you can't train for. Uh, and an unusual pedestrian, like if someone's just walking, jaywalking, or there's some weird construction that's happening, as well as other different random acts, uh, incidents. So the regulation cities um, don't really trust robot taxis because there's so many variables that you can't predict. So I think that when you're listening to this, what the whole uh, spiel was on Alpo Mayo was that, okay, they are, NVIDIA is trying to push this feedback loop now of the physical world where they can simulate it, generate enough data, train a reasoning policy, test it at scale, and then help partners deploy it. That last part is the most important part because I think the future is going to be Google Waymo, it's going to be Tesla, 
And it sounds like it's going to be all the rest of the OEMs are going to be partnering up with NVIDIA to be able to participate in autonomy. So I think that um, physical AI is just another expression of what AI is going to become. And I think that it's probably the greatest TAM out there. And Jensen just wanted to remind everyone, they're going to be the central nervous system of that physical AI thematic as well, not just going to be generative AI. Right now, the valuation on NVIDIA is four and a half trillion dollars plus. You see them going to? 10 trillion. I think they're going to be a 10 trillion dollar company. I think that at the end of the cycle, eventually we're going to hit our head against the wall on uh, the grid problem. I think that AI is such a is a big enough issue that we're probably going to figure out a way around the grid. Um, I don't know, maybe it's orbital compute, but either way, by the end of this AI cycle, you're seeing how NVIDIA continues to put themselves in front of every single derivative of AI. Physical AI has not even gone started yet. So I think that's going to be the biggest TAM of all of AI. That means that NVIDIA is probably going to continue growing at rapid pace and they print cash. And right now they're not expensive, they're three times earnings. So if they continue growing at a 30% clip, why not double that valuation in a couple of years? Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned again, uh, demand off the charts uh, for what they're selling. By the way, I got you an NVIDIA baseball cap. I know you're not, you're going to wear your uh, 10,000, uh, your very cool tattoo shop hat, but I got you an NVIDIA baseball cap too, just for, just for fun, just for a souvenir from Vegas. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I'm an NVIDIA boy. I'm a, I'm a Jan hey. I live in Hollywood. I don't get starstruck in front of celebrities, but Jensen walked across the street. I th I'd stop everyone and stare, so. Appreciate I that. know it was crazy. We were here an hour before the keynote, and there was a line out the door. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Celine Dion, eat your heart out. Anyway, Shy, thanks so much for uh, breaking it down all for us. Thanks for having me.